up, boy? There you here, and this is episode two of Life in Quarantine. So today, in quarantine, I just discovered something that I shouldn't discover, but I discovered anyway. I'm gonna be reading my old fan fiction from grade ten. Anyways, um, this fan fiction is actually a project for my English subject. When the teacher said, "You can make a fan fiction. Go crazy. Go stupid." Make your own story. Make it pop. So I decided to make a fan fiction dedicated to my friends and the things they love, the way that they influence my music taste today. This fan fiction is really wild because it kind of made me who I am now. That I have an open music, more open music taste per se. If you want more of this series give this video a big thumbs up comment down below as well on what should i do if ever and subscribe to my channel as well and stay tuned for more videos maybe while i'm in quarantine who knows anyways without further ado i will now read my fan fiction this fan fiction is from my old laptop and i transferred it into my new macbook right here it's now in my desktop. Anyways, for this fan fiction warning, I have to mention it has mentions of suicide, it has mentions of anxiety, depression, all of those things. And actually, I posted the front page on my Instagram like years ago. It's right here, but I don't have this hard copy now because it's with my teacher. Hi, Sir Q. Anyways, I hope you're doing well. But and luckily i have the soft copy right here on my old laptop that i transferred to my new laptop anyways let us begin reading this fan fiction holy smoly all right let's zoom this in. okay so this is a 35 page fan fiction and it has 8934 words you know because it has an acknowledgement area that I placed onto my English subject fanfiction project thingy. Let's go. There was news everywhere on TV, newspaper, every source a person can find on. People going insane and depressed because of not hearing music, even a single beat. Suicide rates are increasing because the government. I mean, but the government did nothing because the suicide of people deserve it from being brainwashed from music, according to the president. Bands and artists are banned from playing a beat from anything at all. Record labels are shut down and every single life is affected. That is what a black-haired girl named Karil Munoz. Just a quick note though, most of the main characters names here are inspired by either the people I love or the people I am neutral about it's inspired by my school life in my high school life basically so if any of them are reading this just because that I put you guys in the hero or the villain thing it doesn't mean I like you or hate you you just am bored Karil Munoz thought about during the events she's just feeling blank looking through the window seeing her neighborhood i spelled it on purpose like that windows feel so blue and i made a choice in one pun <laughs> oh my god warning as well there will be a lot of puns in this fan fiction because i'm trying to be funny everything seems so plain from her eyes and nothing exciting just like every teenager, she is a music lover. She kept keep straight after music was banned around the world and began to again. She cried tremendously, wishing the government would change their minds, but they didn't. And so, her eyes remained droopy and had eye bugs below her eyes and her skin so pale, full of cuts on her arms. She is so tired of crying, wanting a huge chunk of her life back. She wants to go home to the happy girl she is, just chilling and listening to music. The next day, Kirill woke up not feeling well. There is definitely something in her life and she knew it. She misses the feeling of playing a simple beat. She misses the feeling of escaping when a tune hit on her ears. Oh well, she is going to school as well, feeling uneasy on the opinions of her classmates about the issues she strongly cares about. 
she prepares herself and wore the usual thing. A plain black t-shirt, skinny jeans, and a ton of bracelets, which is literally every band, the fanboy, fangirl in like 2010s, 2013s, and 14s ever. She set her bag and left for school. The sky is so gray, man. Silent. After a few miles of her parents driving her, she finally arrived at Phillips High. Even the school name is inspired by everyday life. Throughout the day, she would just doodle all this random stuff on her black notebook and secretly writes lyrics of songs that makes her emotional and cry a lot of tears. She barely focused on the discussion because of overthinking. Is this life now? She asked herself. Is this what the government wants from us? Sadness? She brushed her hair, frustrated, and her head down. There is a program happening later. A short but sweet girl with black hair named Pia said to Kirill, scrolling through her notebook, flipping page by page. Oh, I wonder what it is all about. Kirill sighed. How boring. Well, how boring and yawning every single program they will give. With no music, this is going to be worse. As the bell rang for the last two periods, the teacher told them to line up properly to go upstairs. Kirill sighed as they went up to the usual brown room with a huge stage and with a lot of white chairs. They took their seats, waiting for the program to start. Everything went silent as footsteps of a man with a checkered polo and black slacks and shoes went in the stage. I forgot to put that in. He is slightly chubby and short. He grabbed the mic and said in a monotonous voice, <clears throat> Good afternoon everyone. Today, I'll have three students from grade 10 who will express their opinions about this issue that is going on around me heavy in the course of music being banned and how it means to them. He breathed slowly and said, Please welcome Akira Chua, Via Cruz, and Kurt Munso. They all entered the middle of the stage, getting their mics. Kirill saw that their eyes are droopy as well, and they're not happy as they used to be. She noticed that their lives revolved around music too, like her. A slightly choppy girl with a dyed dark brown eyes, highlights, stepped forward and took her mind, and tears are slightly forming in her eyes. So, where do I begin? Oh, my name is Akira Chua, and I am one of those people affected by the issue. They told me to speak for them because we all basically have the same idea. Music for us isn't all about genre. It isn't, it isn't all about competition. It is rather expressing thoughts and making life fun, she said in a fake happy voice. Music shouldn't be banned. Why does the government think music is to blame for all this when music is the reason people enjoy and relax? It's the reason why we can express as well. The government wants us to be happy, right? They're doing it wrong. All wrong. I am just reaching out the time I read this because I am trying to be deep but I'm not deep. She screamed and cried, putting her mic down and going to the side of the stage. Kurt and Pia sat down with her and comforted her as she was wailing in a slightly loud voice. After a few minutes of tears and sniffling, the same chubby girl, now her eyes and face slightly red from crying, said these last words. Music is the reason life is so entertaining. Life is perfect to express. We are able to relate. That is all. Thank you. Oh God, I am crying from how deep that was. Not. Everyone on the stage left, and the audience stayed silent and speechless. Mr. Grandiola's eyes became slightly puffy and red as well, because wow, her speech made everyone feel things. What they mean by things are feelings that they should really bring music back. Um, thank you for that wonderful and inspiring speech there. Mr. Grandiola started with stifles and tears. Okay, this is the next part. This is at night probably, I don't know. As the program was done, Kirill sat on the bench outside of the school, staring upwards at the flickering light bulb on the roof. She felt a presence beside her, and that present asked, presence asked, Hey, I want to know you more, Kirill. Kirill faced at the presence and saw the same choppy girl staring at her deeply. You're here, right? Kirill tilted her head, asking to make sure of her. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was so damn emotional. Also, daily reminder, I censored the bad words in this because this I was studying in a Christian school 
and they wouldn't may wouldn't appreciate if that I put bad words in it so I just put puns I just put puns in this fanfiction Akira apologized dearly and laughed silently after oh puns Karel could not help but face palm at Akira's bad puns and at the same time laugh in a chuckling manner they both sat quietly staring at the flickering light bulb till Akira spoke I heard you are amused and I'm just going to to proofread this more. A music enthusiast too, yeah? She asked, rather in a very curious way. Yeah, I miss the feeling of listening to music as much as we want. Kirill sighed, rubbing her hands together. Same Kirill, same. Akira said as she placed a hand on Kirill's shoulder. They both sighed, tempting to make at least a few taps, but doing so will cause bad consequences depending on the music created. Seeing news about it everywhere, it happens. So basically, in this AU, it's I'm not sure if this is dystopia or something, but in this alternative universe, if you make anything related to music, tapping beat, dancing, you'll be arrested or something. Wow, this government is completely cruel. Hey, I have a deal with you. Maybe we could keep this a secret. Akira faced Kirill once again, keeping it quiet as possible. Yeah, what is it? Kirill shivered, saying due it due to the night's cold, while still rubbing her hands. Why don't we make a secret organization called Revolusic? Kurt and P are already in, and we need more music enthusiasts to stop the government from their tracks. Are you in? I just combined revolution and music and put a K on it. Revolusic. How creative, Erika! How creative! Akira gestured her left hand towards Kirill, symbolizing for Kirill to seal the deal. Shake my hand, TikTok. Are you sure this will work? Kirill was nervous, trying to reassure her choices. I'm sure. Just trust us. Akira wrapped her arm over Kirill's shoulder. Fine. Kirill sighed happily and thought the final decision and agreed to join this secret organization. No secret. They both shaken their hands, both smiling, looking through the wonderful future that they can listen to music again. So when's the first meeting? Kirill asked, smiling at her. Tomorrow, in my secret basement. I'll take you, but ask your parents first. Akira warned in a laughing manner. To be honest, in this one, yeah, Akira is low-key inspired by me because Akira is like the words of Erika, Akira, Erika, blah blah. To be honest, in this one, it's more like my classmates ask, make me ask my parents first, not me. So basically, this is a self-insert fan fiction that I wish I had a life like this. Basically, I don't know. Like, I wish I have this freedom, sort of. They most li they'll mostly uh, likely to agree since I'm always in my room and never really goes outside. I just need to be safe. Carol reassured. After a few minutes, Carol's fetchers are here and she needs to go back home. Hey, I better go now. Let's see each other tomorrow. Bye. Carol told Akira and gave her a huge bear hug. Carol then left, heading towards the car. As the radio plays, without music at all, the window closed slowly and the black car left. The next day, the car of Akira's family arrived with her mom and dad inside it and parked in a safe place, which is near the school gate. Akira gestured Kurt, Pia, and Kirill to get in the car and just stay there. Kurt closed the car door and sat on the left window seat. Akira sat in the middle seat, while Kirill sat on the right window seat, while her parents are in front. So her dad turned on the car radio and what played is the usually yawn triggering talk show by monotonous speaking radio DJs. Explanations so plain without something exciting in their lives. Oh, this is gonna be a real born ride. So basically, I feel in this one what I remember in this one, the ones that are always playing are news or um, anything that is just no music at all, just words. Podcast but boring. Akira shrugged and sighed as she crossed her arms. After a few minutes of preparing, finally her dad, dad steered the steering wheel and drove the car, going back to Akira's car. During the travel, Kurt, a guy with thick black hair with really long bangs that went in a slight quiff, asked in a curious manner. As parents of Erika, both of you seem so chill about it. Do you know Eric Erika's plans? Because I heard that you both are strict with her and never let her free about this stuff. Her mom smiled and sighed, explaining, 
Sana all not anymore. My daughter has grown up and learned the ways and I'm so happy with so many prayers. She has become a mature and wonderful woman. We are so happy for her. Sana all! Chara. She sighed and smiled. And yes, we are aware of her plans. In fact, I support her plans because one reason. We also love music. It really shows our expressions towards something or someone. I remember when me and my loving husband used to sing our wedding theme song and share them with our daughter and reminisce the memories as much as we want. However, the sick and twisted minds of the government banned an important chunk of people's lives. And as I have heard, many people got sadder and grimmer ever since. Suicide rates are increasing, yet the government is pleasured in seeing these people end their lives. How cruel! Akira's dad ran in this room with so much anger in the end. Well, they were right anyway. After a few minutes of the monotonous voice coming from the radio, they finally arrived and turned it all off. They got out of the car and shut the door behind them, heading towards the front door of the house. Akira then opened the wooden door and entered her own house, as her friends soon followed. They saw a simple but a kitchen word it when it comes to completeness. There's an oven, a microwave, a drawer for silverware and everything that makes a kitchen so complete. On the right side, there is a polished wooden dining table that is surrounded by six wooden chairs as well, all simple but carved to perfection. This is so aesthetically pleasing. I'm serious, Akira. We all say aesthetically pleasing a lot of times when you're in grade 10. Akira held both shoulders of Akira and shook them forward and backward. Wow, Kirill, you almost made me dizzy, but I mean, don't thank me. Thank my mom and dad for being amazing eyes. <laughs> Akira shrugged and chuckled as she rubbed her hand behind her head. Soon after, the rest were chuckling and laughing as well. Anyways, back to the topic. Akira then said, still smiling a little. Can we go down and discuss our plan now, please, if you don't mind? Akira asked her parents in a calm tone. Sure, I'll come with you all so that if we can help, we can help. Akira's basement. Akira's parents! As Tuesday, Kali went with them downstairs to the secret basement. They opened the room to see the meeting area. And it's like a fan person's dream room. I made it inclusive. So fan person. It has black paint to keep it more intense and hidden. And posters of their hopefully future recruits. Future recruits. Such as Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift, BMTH, Five Sauce, One D, and others. There are even K-pop groups that Pia adore so much, like EXO, BTS, and others. You name it, she's got it. In the middle of the room was a huge round table wrapped in white cloth with a black candle in the middle, like in a secret cult or something. I tried in this one what I know to make it as edgy as possible. Yeah, there were colorful cushion mats around it too to match it. They were all astonished by the design of the room. Seems really a room for a music enthusiast. They were so shocked that 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 the Kurt that Kurt opened his mouth so long. Hey, close your mouth. He might catch flies or whatever. He will lightly slap Kurt's cheek to close his mouth. Come take a seat, everyone. Let's have our first meeting. Akira then gestured, and each person in the room has sat in their own cushion mats in an Indian seating position. Well, good morning, everyone. Akira agreed to officially start the first ever meeting of the newly created revolution of the music called Revolution. To start the meeting, we need ideas to get our first future recruits, Justin Bieber <laughs> and Oliver Sykes from Bring Me the Horizon. <laughs> Any ideas? <laughs> Akira announced and placed her arms together on the table. Why Justin Bieber, dude? Have you heard about the criminal things he has done? He might have a touch our plans and heard question in a screaming way, but he got his arm slapped by P. Hey, people change, like you literally say all the time. That applies to celebrities too, because they are human as well, just like us, okay? Justin is fine and mature now. <laughs> Apparently, I think this did not go up well because of the controversy that revolves Justin Bieber now. Yikes. Sigh. Living in your own words, will you? Pia reassured then rubbed the part of Kurt's arm where, she, where he got slapped. Fine. Kurt's side, driving the eye fine longer suddenly an idea snapped into him hey i heard that justin and oliver are taking a vacation here in the philippines <laughs> shouted suddenly so, where are they going akira said as they leaned closer to let kurt whisper they are taking a vacation in palawan and i heard a friend there who can let them join 
Kurt whispered as they discussed their plans. It's not that easy to convince them, however. Cariel sighed deeply. Let's just hope, yeah. Cariel smiled a little past. It should be, I'm not sure what it should be. I think this was when Kareel changed her mind. Kareel smiled a little, passing a bit of hope to each and everyone in the room. Everyone smiled at Kareel's hopefulness, and Kurt broke the awkward silence. I'll call my friend to help, and I'll ask for the reply. Kurt concluded for their plan. And because I know that Akira may ask the question, because I know she asked too much. No offense, but yes, they're... It, it should be their non-binary that non-binary okay done okay it should be they're non-binary and they're not exclusively male or female to answer the question you might ask kurt asked with a little grin he took my question out of my mouth and i'm sorry if i was ever if i ever asked too much and it's annoying akira sighed and brushed her hair with her fingers nah it's fine you just need to shut up sometimes akira laughed and poked her nose and akira pouted also, take it as a joke and an advice at the same time. An advice on how not to be annoying at times. Kirill asked and added and rubbed Akira's head. You know, I'm so glad you found her because I think you would really teach her the ways on how not to be annoying sometimes. <laughs> Akira's mom said, patting her daughter's right shoulder and kissing her head. So the plan's final? Kurt asked one more time just to make sure. Fine. They all said in unison except for Kurt. Alright, I'll text you the update tomorrow. I'll let you know, eh? Kurt told the group. Okay, we'll all be going our separate ways now. It's night time already. Pia told her last words for the day towards the group. Okay then, thank you for coming to our very first meeting. And I hopefully one day music will be back. Akira smiled and bid farewell to Kurt, Pia, and Karil as they left the room and went back to their respective homes. Hey Kurt, next day, this is next day, I think. I think this is next day. Hey Kurt, any updates? Akira shouted from the distance, going closer to Kurt. I'll announce it once everyone is here. Be patient, yeah? Kurt faced back to Akira and tapped her, tapped her right shoulder as they both proceeded to class just like every single day. When they entered the room, they saw two girls sad and looking through out the window. Very, very shonen anime-like or some very school shonjo anime-like. Akira's eyes could not believe herself. Because she knew those two people. They're like the cheerful duo in their school, being happy to everyone. One girl is short, has glasses, and has beautiful slightly red black hair, and her eyes sad and forcing themselves to set shut. The other girl is taller than the other with and she's slightly muscular. She also has slightly red hair, which is more obvious and same with the other. Her eyes are sinking in sadness. Hey, let's try to ask them if they were okay. Kurt breathed lonely, his head down. Akira and Pia went straight to them and kneeled beside the short girl, and then Kurt and Karel kneeled beside the slightly taller girl. The short girl started tearing up, her tears flowing through her cheeks. Hey, are you okay, pal? Akira concernedly asked her, rubbing her back. Akira, is it freaking obvious? I'm not okay, right? I just want music back. It's the reason this school and our lives are never grim. Paul sniffled and cried, her teardrops on her armchair. Yeah, in our school, we have armchairs, so... Akira and Pia brushed her hair, has hugged her on both sides, calming her down and cheering her up. Meanwhile, Kareel is doing the same thing. Why is the government so, so cruel? Don't they know the emotional sufferings we feel without listening to music? Justin cried and wailed, leaning her head onto Kareel's arms, and they both comforted her as well, just to make them happy. After a few minutes, and everyone has cheered up and understood each other, getting along, Akira made a proposition. I have something to say, pal, Justine. We have a revolution for music called Revolution, and we need more recruits too. However, don't reveal this to anyone, except us, because this is a secret organization. And then if the government catches us, we're screwed, Akira asked a favor to the two girls. So, will you join? Akira ended and placed her right hip and waited for their answer. Hmm. Pot, Paul, Pau thought and whispered to Justin, and she smiled. One, two, three. Pau and Justin chanted slowly and said, We approve! They both said in unison, smiling and hugging each other. They all smiled, and they all formed a group hug in the middle of the empty room. 
Are you in for a meeting later? Kurt, ha Kurt, Kurt. Kurt has updates on his friend. Akira stated in a surprising way. Let me call my parents and ask them. Pao told them all first, Justin agreeing to do it as well. They both took, up, took out their phones and messaged their parents, waiting for a reply from them. After about a few seconds, they received a text both from their parents and they frowned. Wait, wait, they didn't allow you both? Akira questioned in a slightly mad tone. Nana, I'm just kidding with you guys. <laughs> Paul and Justin smiled and showed the text because they're both allowed to attend the meeting. Akira's sadness starts to fade and happiness became to shine even more. Oh, this meeting is getting even better. See you guys later, yeah? I'll just prepare my stuff home and I'll go to your house with you. Kirill told them as she packed her bags, the remaining people bid her by for a while and went home for a while. But when she arrived at home, apparently they have a new housekeeper. She went upstairs and when she opened the door, she noticed that her black notebook is no longer in its proper position. Plus, it has huge stains, so she immediately got moody in a bad way because that notebook is precious to her. She prepared herself and got her the stuff she truly needed, even the stained notebook due to the fiasco. She went downstairs all furious and when the housekeeper asked her, she interrupts saying, If you really are a housekeeper, you really need to learn how to take care of your client stuff, will you? And slammed the door loudly. You know, this is also based on a true story that um, many people have that they have a horrible homekeeper. Housekeeper, I mean, she has so many problems. It's making me stressed out, she muttered to herself angrily. Carol commuted via taxi and told the taxi driver to drive to her destination. After a boring ride, with no music obviously, she finally got out of the taxi, still very moody, and knocked on the door. The door opened and it was Akira behind it. Hey, Akira now interrupted as Carol just angrily walked inside and went downstairs. I wonder what happened to her that caused her to be so moody. Akira shrugged and sighed and headed down. When Karil headed down to the basement and opened the door, her eyes went so wide she couldn't believe her eyes. Her anger is completely vanished. She saw two familiar faces and her face went red from embarrassment. I, uh, um, I'll be outside if you need me. Karil blushed and closed the door. Oh my gosh, it's Justin Bieber and Oliver Sykes. Carol secretly squealed and stopped when she suddenly heard Kurt's loud laughing and table banging. Carol face palm, but is still blushing and tempted to scream at someone's face. Probably Kurt. After she calmed down a little, she went inside and took a seat, not making eye contact with anyone. Kurt can't contain laughter, so he laughed a bit more, and I punched him in the face. It's supposed to be, and Carol punched him, not I. This is actually a third person point of view I should probably proofread this more back then ow Kirill what was that for Kurt grabbed the part where he got punched and it got red it's common do sense dude jeez you're so annoying Kirill complained he face palm and slapped Kurt's shoulder hey 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 stop fighting right now now's not the time Akira calmed them down by standing up off them and patting both of their shoulders gently and went back to her seat. To surprise me, Akira, if I didn't see if I didn't see your face, I swear I've already punched you as well. Karil sighed and went back to her seat. What do you mean? Karil asked, and suddenly Karil sang the song at the same time. Justin laughed in the chat. It should be I should have read this at What do you mean? I'm back because of the memory card. Good thing we're not in public, Kurt stated. If we were, we could be in a lot of trouble, he added as well. I'm sorry for singing it. I just miss the feeling of singing your favorite songs any time of the day. Kirill sighed and smiled as well, remembering the memories. Us too, Kirill. Pia agreed, tapping her right shoulder. Us too, Kirill. Pia agreed, tapping her right shoulder. Anyways, you know someone that we can get more you know someone so we can get more recruits? Justin asked the group and Karil's head snapped. 
I know someone and they are very enthusiastic about music too, she said with her pointer finger up. Tell this person to join them. It will benefit us good, Oliver said in a positive manner. Carrie took her phone and began typing away. Who is this person anyways? Polly asked. The whole my di digital escape. But mostly on Brian Stars and making force Andy Beers of another band to join this secret organization. Carrie explained completely. That's a great idea. He's an awesome man and I'm sure he's willing to help. This did not age well because apparently Brian Stars is a pedophile or something. And he destroyed my digital escape and ruined the whole thing and also he's very ooh, controlling that's all he smiled at the idea and he's also excited for this organization to work well suddenly Karel's phone rang and she felt it vibrate on her clothes give me a while and I'll take this call Karel said and she was running to get her phone. They all nodded and she went to the corner of the room to pick up the call. Hello? Who is this? Karel asked from her phone, sending her message to her receiver. Hey, it's Brian and I received your message. He stated from the other line. I approve on all your plans to bring music back and I'm so glad to receive your message. I'll announce it via video secretly to all the email of bands and we'll sure to get a lot of recruits. He paused for a while, laughing a little too soon after, due to happiness. Thank you so much, Brian, for approving, and we are glad you are part of the team and many more recruits to come. Carol squealed from a new member who can truly help. Anyways, I'll see you soon. We'll send the email to them. Bye, and best of luck! Car Brian added as he ended the call. Carol put down her phone and placed it in her pocket, smiling so wide. What was that about, Carol? A curious question. Obviously, Brian approved to be part of our organization. Carol suddenly screamed because she can contain the happiness inside her. Woohoo! Everyone chanted in accomplishment while raising their hands up. Well, Brian also said that he will pass the message via video secretly to the brand's emails. Carol happily said, passing the message on to the whole organization. Seriously, I'm definitely excited to bring back music back with you guys. I was smiled in a shocking way and hugged Justin really tight. It took a few days for all the bands to reply and shockingly everyone approved to fly to the Philippines for the meetings. That's a little ambitious isn't it Erica? A little ambitious. Carol called Brian again and waited for him to answer. Hello, are you there? Carol asked first. And by the way, you probably heard that they all approved to fly there and join the organization. Also, I'll be there as well. Just give me a few hours to travel, Brian told her. Sure, Brian. I'll see you soon. Carol be in for a while and ended the call. Excitement in her heart. Carol called her friends and told them as well the updates. And they were all so, so happy hearing the announcement. After a few hours of waiting, Brian finally arrived inside the room. Hey, Brian. Carol greeted. Hey, guys. Brian enthusiastically said back as he took his seat. So are they coming soon? Akira asked Brian. Yep, in a few minutes probably. They got in the middle of a traffic jam, replies Brian with a small sigh. Typical Philippines. Of course there will be huge traffic jams especially in this city. Just in face pump inside as well along with the rest of the group. Hey, I'll go to the door and check if the van has arrived. Dia stood up and went out to the door to wait for new recruits. Pia kept on waiting and waiting, every few seconds checking the watch on her wrist. Then, finally, she saw a light of a black van heading towards her. Very edgy. In a matter of few, the van stopped and Pia was shocked. But in fact, that wasn't the only van that arrived. In fact, there were more and more vans that arrived, each parked at one side of the house. Akire. Karel and Kurt and the old others from the room came outside the door to check who arrived. They saw vans and vans and many more vans surrounding them. In a few seconds, the window seats opened and many males and females came out of the door. Akira could not help but open her mouth in surprise of so many people coming over. Not you to Akira, I swear! Karel face found at the right hand and used her left hand to close Akira's mouth. Akira stood up properly again and all the new recruits came in front of them. Karil took a deep breath and spoke. I'm so glad you all took time to get here and survive the traffic jams in this country too. 
They all sigh from tiredness and smile because they all believe positively that they can bring the thing they are passionate about, music. It's okay. After all, when it comes to music, we will always be passionate to be there. Said a guy who apparently dyed his hair red, wearing a gray snapback, a full sleeve tattoo on his arm, and the black stud piercings, along with a guy with a few tattoos on his left, which is a huge ring tattoo wrapped around his arm, who nodded as well. Oh, thanks for understanding, Josh Donatiner Joseph. Kareel gratefully thanked them. She's a huge 21 Pilots fan, by the way, during that time. No problem. Glad to help. They replied back with enthusiasm. Next page. Let's just go inside before authorities catch us. Akira gestured everyone to go in with wait in the basement. Each person went in and wow, there are a lot of them. They all went downstairs and in the room, but they heard some screams in the room. Apparently, Justin and Ollie stayed and had a little heated argument. Kurt opened the door and Kareel was shocked from what she saw. They distanced themselves a little bit and Akira, Kareel, and Kurt came close to Ollie while Paul and Justin and Dia came close to Justin. Hey, is there anything wrong? Kurt asked. Just one thing to end this argument because it can destroy the organization. I'm sorry, we just had a little misunderstanding about our genres because it is treated in a different way. I said that pop recently is meaningless and always all about some cheesy love and he got offended. All he spoke out not feeling so victorious. Actually, I don't understand how metal is music because there is just screaming. It's just different for me. And that started the argument. Justin added, feeling guilty of his actions. In summary, he basically argued how pop is less important but metal and vice versa. Okay, let me tell you about something. Kareel swallowed her saliva and added me. Music isn't just all about competition or whatever genre you do. It's all about expression and sharing. It's about creating feelings for people to relate and smile upon or cry on their shoulders. We don't care whether you play pop or metal, whatever genre. What important is, is that you played it by your parts. Ollie and Justin look at each other sympathetically and what situation they placed on each other. Justin began to speak up. I'm sorry, Ollie. I don't know what came through me when I said that. Ollie patted Justin's shoulder and smiled. It's okay. I also want I, I also want to apologize on what I said because it is just not me at that point. Everyone smiled that they finally got along and they finally understand that all genres need to work together to make this work. Hey, let's share some pizza to celebrate this momentous occasion. The beginning of fabulous. <laughs> Akira declared and technically she knew that most of the bands, especially Fallout Boy and Five Seconds of Summer, love pizza a lot. I mean, Michael wants an upset. So they asked for pizza and it was delivered in a Genevieve. Everyone is happy and they became friends with each other as they prepare as well for the talk with the government. Hey, hey, who brought the monopod? Let's take a selfie with everyone. Pao happily announced, excited for this moment, and one person with curly hair and a banana raised his hand. Ashton? How do you monopod a lot. Do you like to selfies a lot? Kareel asked, rubbing her head while laughing. Um, he takes a lot of nature selfies, so obviously yes. A guy with a red dyed hair and a unique eyebrow piercing named Michael said as he rubbed Ashton's back, and everyone is laughing at the happiness with a hint of awkwardness. Is this recording? Okay, it's still recording. Oh, it's still recording. Ashton gave the monopod to Pao and set her camera timer on her phone and raised it up. But she can't raise it up high since most of them are too tall. Hey, I'll help you. A muscular guy with Maui jeans named Callum got the monopod and set it up. Thank you, Kyle. Really appreciated it. Pao thanked him with a little blush. No problem. <laughs> Called chuckled while look, a guy with a black lip ring nudged him. As they positioned the monopod, Brian shouted, On the count of three, guys! One, two, three! Smile! And it clicked. They saw the pictures and laughed at their priceless but wonderful faces, word of memories to come. Hey, since we're all here, let's all party! Kurt said, smiling at the excitement in his heart. With the planning, of course, he added. From today on, I now announce that Brian will be our spy as well as our updater if anyone else got captured. He will also be the one keeping the files and receipts. The other members of my digital escape can help Brian as well. Oh my god, I just remember this did not blow up so well. Akira announced putting Brian in the middle. Everyone clapped at Brian's scream, woohoo, at 
at him because they all know that Bryce is capable of doing the job since he's an expert at interviewing and stuff all things related to updating suddenly the door opened again as more groups entered but this time more of an Asian ethnicity they arrived in big groups and sat silently sorry we are late our delay is the worst out there a girl named C oh, hello bitches Saint said with that obvious tired look on their faces due to waiting I, I understand I, I mean it's not your fault Pia said as she continues to blush because she is talking to one of their favorite K-pop groups right now and she can't believe it in front of her eyes. Basically, mm, that one that I inspired Pia in here, she's still a K-pop star by the way. Hi. Anyways, there is also a reason why we added some K-pop groups. It is because we do not want anyone to feel left out. And music is still music. Even the language of the song isn't your language. The importance is your happiness while listening to it. Pia added, and Brian agreed and nodded, since Pia is the one who suggested adding them into the organization. Everyone clapped loud once again, and now, they started planning ahead for the revolution. The next cold and grim afternoon, Karel, Kurt, Akire, Pao, Pia, Justin, and Brian walked together, trying to search for clues. As they kept going on, Akira seems very impatient and kicked the nearby stone. This is so boring, not hearing anything exciting, she sighed, placing her hands in a pocket of her coat. Suddenly, she got this feeling into her of dancing like a robot out of nowhere. As they saw that, they began to dance randomly and smile. They kicked their feet, pulled it back, any dance move that seemed so cool. Stop right there, kids! A voice shouted from behind, getting close to them. Karel saw this and had an idea. She faced to Brian and mounted, run and hide, to him. Brian nodded and ran away and hid somewhere that he can be seen. As the officer arrived, he told them in a strict tone, What do you think you're all doing? Dancing is also prohibited because it's considered having music. Little did you know, huh? Karil could not help but clench her fist tighter and had tears coming out of her. She replied, while well, having this feeling to cry, you monsters practically remove everything, freedom of expression then. The officer gave a tragic and sad smile and stated, I know kid, and I understand your point. I, as an officer of the president, I don't know why they agreed this plan honestly. I can I'm just following the rules because if I don't, I might end up dead. Karil asked, said, I mean, Karil said, at least you are not like the others who are so deaf and blind what tr music truly is. Music isn't all about the bad stereotypes you hear around. Karil paused for a while and added, like we all said, music is a way of expressing and there's nothing wrong with expressing because I mean, it's our human right, the freedom of expression. And music, however, is one of the ways on how we express our feelings towards something or someone. Akira stepped forward as well, telling the officer, music for us isn't just a hobby to get over with. In fact, music helps people to make new friends too, with the same interest in the music each and human being listens to. It also makes an identity for each person, and that what makes them unique. I just thought of what makes you beautiful. The officer hesitated to take them to prison, however. Because of the consequences, if he doesn't follow it, he placed all of them in handcuffs and sent them straight to prison. And yes, even their minors, they're still jailed. Sigh, this government, this did not blow up well, didn't it? They are now in the cold and thinking gets on the city jail. To be honest, in this one, I have no idea why I used an in real life city. It should have been a different alternative to city, to be honest. I don't get my world building here either. They were brought straight in one room, leaving them to wail in suffering in nothing but a gray room with bad quality supplies. Where are the other kids? Are they missing today? Patrick said in a very curious manner. I'm sorry, but did, little did we actually know, dance is prohibited as well because it is technically part of music. Brian announced and everyone said aloud, what? Alexander, a guy with sky blue dyed hair, has a side look on his face and asked. Wow, this government has really screwed up. Even dancing is prohibited. Shannon, a girl, my, from my, a girl from my digital escape who has short hair, which is mainly black hair, green on top, said in a sympathetic manner. I'm worried for those kids. They really work hard trying to get music back, and we are almost there. Please go with them, man. 
What are you doing, Brian? A guy who has a very sharp jawline and well defined nose named Andy asked him, leaning his hand on the table. Actually, right now, Shannon, I think. I think right now, Shannon isn't dyeing her hair more or something, from what I know. Brian spread his eyes wide on the screen. Oh my gosh, he whispered. And everyone went to the screen. On there, it was the event before the kids in the organization got captured. How did you get the footage without getting caught? A boy who has perfect curly crisp and a have a slight jawline by the name of Joyce. Choice of asked. And yes, they forgot to mention that they included some artists who don't belong in ranks. Carol told me to hide in a safe spot. And I recorded the event just in case. So, yeah. Now I saw the comments. I'm so happy that there are so many closeted people on our side. Brian said happy and proud of everyone. We just need to devise a plan for them to be free. A girl who has no aqua hair named Halsey said. It has been two days since they have been in jail. They are still whining from boredom and not entertaining. Then suddenly, they saw flickering of cameras and a person in a coat in front. Hello, my name is Tyler Oakley. Oh god, I used to be a Tyler OP son. Oh dear. And today in our news, apparently, the government caught kids for dancing publicly without shame. Let's go see them. He said from an area where they can see him. The camera struck them and they covered their faces as the interviewer arrived. Just a question as well. There's a viral video in which you guys talk to an officer bravely to reject the rule. However, it's sad you guys just got jail. Any thoughts? Kirill stood up but didn't answer anything. Instead, she clapped the beat without shame, and soon everyone followed her. Even their other prisoners soon followed. Kirill started to chant the mantra, and everyone followed as well. They were feeling something different, something they felt familiar. Kirill smiled and continued for a few minutes because she was aware of the plan out of nowhere. While the prisoners and the interviewer are distracted from Kirill's tactics, they split themselves into pairs to set all of the mystic prisoners free. Ashton and Callum took the big shuffles and dug the grave ground all the way up to the very dark side of the jail room. I don't know if you can dig gravels using the big shovels, but this is fiction. Callum's head popped up and said to others in the room, This is a nice chat. Be quiet and get out of here. So Kurt, Akira, Pao, Justin, and Pia quickly, quietly rushed the hole with Callum and got him outside. They saw that every prisoner, every prisoner is out in a jiffy. After Kirill was done, the interviewer stopped the interview and said, Kirill, we believe in you. Make this the last stand we all have been waiting for. Kirill smiled and bid farewell as she jumped on the hole and climbed it up again. This is really low-key getting deep and at the same time not getting deep, you feel? I feel like during the time I was typing this, I feel so strong. I feel so powerful. Everyone, even the music prisoners, hugged each other and went made straight back to the basement. How do you get us out of here? Security guards are tough, Akira said, curious. Well, I distracted them with a radio playing random music in the distance, and they went away on when they were standing on. Brian smiled, said, smiling. Okay, guys, tomorrow will be the stand for music everyone's waiting for. We better be expecting to meet the president and have some tough talk. Carol said, and she remembered the words Tiger only said. Ty Tyler Oakley said. Let me just rest my turn. The next day came. This is it. The day everyone has been waiting for. The stand for music. Everyone prepared their black boots, leather jackets, as well as black t-shirts and masks symbolizing revolution. They each got their music instruments back for their weapons to win people over with amazing music they made due to their passion. They left the basement and took a long march onwards towards the Marignan Palace. During their march, there is huge coldness. Yes, everyone is shivering, but to achieve their goal, they have to pass through it. They were marching until a high G notes out there. Oh my god, my god, the <laughs> Everyone's eyes were lit wide, and the kids were dumbfounded and squealing a little due to the familiarity of the sound. Okay, there's an F note, a B note, an E note, D note, G note, C note, and a B, E, A, D note. Everyone turned back and still dumbfounded and eyes wide, seeing a black float with four men standing on top of it. 
When I was a young boy, my father took me into the city to see a marching band. Kirill knowing the song by heart and soul, gonna believe it herself. That voice is coming from none other than Gerard Way from My Chemical Romance. As she looked back again, she saw Gerard Way in lead vocals. Frank Eero in the guitar, Mikey Way in the bass, Ray Toro in the guitar as well, and Rob Rayer in the drums. Sorry if I watch them, I'm not really a huge fan, but I do listen to the music as well. They were all wearing black fitted jackets that resembled soldiers with white stripes. They were all wearing black, basically, to make it a little bit more emotional. The float came closer and closer as they were singing Welcome to the Black Parade in the most emotional way possible that can make hearts cry and wail in emotions. Everyone held each other as they saw the float go towards them slowly. They split into half and let the float come true, slowly while still emotional. It stopped when it was in front of them, and everyone went around the float, looking up at them. Jeremy took his mic and said, It's good to see you all here. I mean, it's rare to see all of us back for this time, but teamwork and passion is needed to get this. Please join us and support the Black Parade once again, in cooperation with Revolusic. Everyone clap really loudly and careered on the other's behalf of the organization gratefully shouted, Thank you for joining and helping us! Gerard and the rest smiled in passion and said, No problem. Then he added, Let's go. We have something important to save. And so they marched with their masks on and slowly heading to the palace while Welcome to the Black Parade is playing. After a few hours of marching towards the destination, they finally arrived at the destination, the guards intact. They stopped and waited for the palace's reply. After a few minutes, all the lights shut down and went to darkness. Then a spotlight shows as a presence appears there. Based on the structure, it seems like a woman. Her face is white as porcelain, her hair is ebony black, and she wears a very fancy clothing as if it resembles the Victorian era. A huge evil summer plastered on her face, holding a fancy looking bag. Everyone is pretty much looked at anger. Who are you? Kirill asked in confusion. Aren't you unaware? I'm a daughter of the president, or should I say, the father I killed? And a beautiful, ultimate queen, Miriam Lion. She smirked even more with confidence, fixing her hair as well. What? You killed your own father? Mind explaining the videotape about him banning music then? Akira questioned in anger. Ooh, plot twist! It was not the father who knew this! It was the daughter! Woo! Very original! They were slightly intimidated by her confident and villainy action. Hi, you gullible fools. I actually disguised as the president after I killed him and lip synced a forced speech from him before I killed him! She laughed heavily right right after. You're one crafty woman, but you're not getting away from the huge crime you have done. Gerard shouted from the mic. Oh, if it isn't my chemical romance, that bland, the bad that split up in 2010, that event should make people cry and wail in sadness. For me, that was the best time ever! <laughs> she said, walking towards to the floor. What the heck did you just say? Kurt's anger rose as he leaned closer and tried to stop her yapping, but Pia stopped. Don't give in to violence. Pia held his right fist at time. So apparently, the reason we didn't hear any update from your palace is that you, a wretched woman, killed your mother as well? Ooh, very, very plot twisty. It was not the parents who did it all along, it was the daughter who took power. Bao concluded based on her amazing detective skills and observations. Ta-ta! You're correct! One big plan accomplished to destroy music once and for all, and all I need to destroy it more is for you guys to be gone! Miriam snapped her fingers in confidence still. Wow, this woman never gets a break! You know, dude, here's a cop of calm the heck down and get off your imaginary podium! I actually inspired this, what I remember, the here's a cop of calm the fuck down tweet from Michael Clifford. I just censored it because obviously it's a project. Michael Saster and everyone in the area screamed, Ooh, while Akira chuckled, knowing that Michael's a very sassy person at heart. Well, according to Callum. I was a Michael Stan too, just so you know. 
Listen, you red-haired rat. If you sass me, I'll sass you worse. Try me. A smirk once again came to her face, brushing her nails. Michael tried to punch her and clench his fist, but didn't budge, didn't budge to violence anyway. Try me, loves. You won't stop me from this music-free world. <laughs> she paused, turning to her back to them. Guards kept them and make sure they're dead. Immediately, she screamed that she walked and guards prepared their weapons and went closer to kill them. Good thing they devised the plan and they all planned to mix their songs into one mashup and win the guards hearts once and for all. Each band and artist fell in line at the back of the back foot. First up to play music is given to the single artist for a while. Justin, Halsey, Troy, Ariana, Taylor and others sang within a mashup. By sudden surprise, rappers like Nicki Minaj, Meek Mill and others came and helped. After that situation, the guards were left loose a little bit. Next up are the bands, whether rock bands, boy bands, or girl bands, they don't care. 1D vamps, 5 sauce, little mix, 5th harmony, etc. It's all of these actually are artists that we all know most of the time, that we listen to a lot, and so much more play. They even add K-pop groups and dance and sing their stuff in their own language, making them confused and curious about universal music. Suddenly, the earplug that prevented the music, the guards from liking music exploded from too much harmony. Apparently, the way to stop music, to stop the guards is by music. How original! And they began to drop their weapons and dance. Mariam looked back and saw her guards against her, now enjoying the harmony of music as much as possible. After all of them sang and danced with all of their hearts out, My Chemical Romance went up on the float again and sang the May Death Never Stop You album. That album is really iconic actually. It has an iconic voice. Album making people swoon and sway their body to the fast or slowly depending on the song. Miriam tried to cover her ears to avoid the sound from making her astonished and interested. You'll never make me like music. Don't even try to play that stupid album in front of me, I swear. She shouted and complained me well, but still determined not to give in. While she was suffering and trying not to listen, even a beat or note, another type of sound came. The siren of a police fan. Presidents from other countries arrived with army general-like suits and MCR stopped playing for a while to see what happens. The presidents went to Miriam and said, I'm sorry young lady, you really screwed up as a prestigious young daughter of a president. You literally killed your parents and hypnotized the whole office by your little ear plug just to plan music. Really? Miriam, I expected more from you. One president said to her, disappointed and angry. You got us through torture and people are sending us hate, hate and more hate because of this issue you have caused. Must be jailed for a lifetime already. Another person said, hands up, we're taking you somewhere. A general of another country said, as her now messy hair is tangled due to the wind and handcuffs secured her wrist. So you're just buying time for these people to capture me? You wretched, wretched music lover should die already, she explained angrily as she was forced to get in the van. The van got shot and it left somewhere. Miriam doesn't want to be in, probably. Very anticlimactic. I thought that, you know, that Miriam would love music eventually and we all live in a happy ending, but apparently for me, that's a little too... That's a little too... Predictable. We're already towards the end! Woohoo! Everyone screamed in victory as they finally won the stand for music. I'm so happy I can listen to music again. I feel so free! Akira screamed in happiness. I can feel my ears again! That was great! Akira jumped on how epic that battle was. Or better, how teamwork of every band and genre increased each time. The kids gave a group hug to each other, feeling accomplished on what they started. And now it just got bigger and bigger. The bands and artists gave a huge awe to the group hug us and as well gave each other fist bumps, bro hugs, sis hugs, anything. I should have put hugs instead just to make it gender neutral. That was very off putting. Hey, thank you for creating this organization. Finally, we have the freedom in our passion for music. Justin smiled at everyone, his smile wider than before. You are, you are welcome. We can now enjoy life as much as we did before again. 
Pia gratefully said, as Paul Taco just did a stare boat screaming that this is actually happening. Y'all honestly did amazing. I'm so proud to have found music because it really connects people. Kurt got deep and emotionally cried in joy as well while saying it. We do agree. Everyone replied as well. With slight tears in their eyes. Aww. Hey, what are we waiting for? Let's make some music again! Ollie said, hyped about doing the thing that they all about are passionate about again. Um, to be honest in this, this is very OOC out of character, so I'm sorry if I should have said this a while ago. No. On the count of three, we'll start the party and hype for music for everyone, Kirill stated, thanking everyone as well for taking part in the organization that started out small and now they're here. One, two, three, cheers for Revolusic! They all said, raising their right fist. Pala. <laughs> okay, um... After a few years of fixing the world, the Philippines became a more peaceful place where everyone can enjoy music and their lives. Well, in their lives... Mm, mm, hmm. Although everyone in the organization split up to do their own thing, it's the best way. They will still keep in touch, however. Every band and artist started to create new material that is worthy to listen and help people to connect more and create joy. Well, this is really bittersweet too. I think I place this very bittersweetly because we all, aside from music, have our own lives as well. They'll still keep in touch, which is cool. The kids are still studying at school, spending their life together in the school stairs, talking about music, and connecting themselves as well. To be honest, I uh, kinda got the timing wrong. It should have been after a year. Karil no longer relapsed and she is happy to have just a skin full of small scars that she'll never open again. Paul and Justine are still the cheerful duo in the school, bringing happiness to everyone. Everyone. Akira is still the same but now plays volleyball more for fun. She still has music in her heart, however. Uh, sadly, this god i miss playing volleyball and this blew up so well because i mean this blew up so well because i am now a haiku stand and i miss playing volleyball kurt learned how to calligraphy and is willing to share his masterpieces to his friends pia got into k-drama and called her friends to watch it with her as well they enjoyed life and became closer than ever before and what about miriam if you're curious about this nasty villain she was sent to a maximum security compound prison in russia <laughs> Because I think in this one, I think that Russia has the most hellish prisons, maybe? I don't know. For her heinous crimes that no one could ever forgive. She has been guarded by two professional security guards and lived a sad life there forever. All because of that huge plan on banning music. And so overall, they have a happy ending. And of course, connections with each other. Teamwork among genres the freedom of expression, and happiness from everyone. Well, except Miriam, of course, who is suffering due to her consequences. The end. We're not yet done because we're still 34 page. And I made an acknowledgement quote for my friends, dedicated to my friends, who helped me create my music taste in this world. I love you guys. Be unique. And stay amazing, as always. I try to make it poemy, but... It's from the heart. Exo, exo, Erica. Okay, let me just open this because it gives more light. Okay, it's give, it does give more light. So that's it. That's the whole fan fiction that I read, so as observed and seen. Um, I have a lot of changes in my life after reading, after making this. Making this fan fiction now. I'm now a Haikyuu stan. Anime stan more like, but I'm more of a Haikyuu stan. And I still listen to music though. I still listen to bands, but more of single artists nowadays. But still, they're a very important part in my life. And I am grateful that I have listened to them because they made me and my friends closer than ever. And, um, and you know, I'm just really happy that I read this because it is a really huge part of my life that that I was able to do this, I was able to connect with my friends more, I was able to laugh and share my uh, puns with them, and the experiences that we have together. 
And now I'm going to end this vlog by saying and reminding you all to always support our frontliners and donate if ever. I will link I will link the for different organizations of, of our university in San Beda who are doing donation do, donation packagings right now in the description below. I will add more if I find more. Or if you could DM me at my social media. It is also pretty great. If I also see it on my tail, it's pretty good. So, ayun nga. Thank you guys so much for watching me read dramatically my fan fiction. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe to my channel as well. And I am so excited to make episode 3. This is right. Episode 3 of my Life in Quarantine episode. Because this week, this Saturday, Haikyuu is releasing their last episode of Season 4 for Score. And I heard it's gonna be exciting. So I will surely make my reaction on it. So I will see you guys in the next vlog, in the next episode of Life in Quarantine. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, wash your hands, wear masks ever, stay at home, and help the needy as well if you see someone needing help. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And this is well.